JBN keep you informed and Michelle Jones and in the news. St. Elizabeth police arrested suspected gunmen from St. James. Two men were arrested in connection with the seizure of a gun and the six rounds of ammunition during a police operation along the Margotty Main Road in St. Elizabeth on Thursday night. Reports are that the police, acting on intelligence, intercepted a tote of Oxy and following a search, and 9mm Smith & Wesson with six live rounds were found inside the bus. Head of the St. Elizabeth Police Division, Acting Superintendent Coolidge Minto, says the names of the men are being withheld pending further investigations being done with the St. James Division. ASB Minto said the detainees are from St. James. Both men were subsequently arrested and taken to the Black River CID for further investigations. A third person who was in the company of the men earlier that evening was taken to the Black River Hospital suffering from gunshot wounds. He's also from St. James. The vehicle in which the men were traveling had several holes, what appeared to be bullet holes. The vehicle was seized and processed by a scenes of crimes detective. The suspects are also being questioned in relation to a shootout between gunmen earlier Thursday night in Lover's Lane, Carisbrook. ASB Minto also noted that on December 8th, Two motor vehicles that were stolen in St. James, a Toyota Voxy and a Toyota Nawa were recovered in St. Elizabeth hours after they were reported stolen. Since imposition of the states of emergency in neighboring divisions, there have been an increase in violent activities in the parish, according to the St. Elizabeth police. Fisherman shot dead in Old Darbor Bay. A man was shot dead by a gunman while ordering a drink at a bar in Old Darbor Bay, St. Catherine, Thursday evening. The dead man has been identified as 38-year-old Ashley Taylor, otherwise called Danman, a fisherman from Nareen Lane in Old Arbor Bay. Reports received indicate that around 6.20 p.m., Taylor was inside a bar ordering a drink when he was approached by a man armed with a handgun. The man, police said, opened gunfire, hitting the now deceased in the head. The gunman then fled on foot in the area. Residents of the area rushed the injured man to the Maypen Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. No motive has been established for the killing, the police said. St. James businessman arrested for mail and wire fraud. A Montego Bay St. James businessman, who is wanted by the United States authorities, was arrested Thursday afternoon on a warrant of extradition. He is 38-year-old Troy Anthony Williams of Bull Village in the parish. It is understood that he was captured at his home by members of the Lottery Scam Task Force. Williams is reportedly wanted by the U.S. authorities for mail and wire fraud. He is now in custody pending an extradition hearing. Over $18 million stolen in fraud at Sunshine Snacks Distributor. The Portmore Criminal Investigations Branch, CIB, is investigating an $18.5 million fraud at Confectionery and Snacks Jamaica Limited, the local distributor 
of Sunshine Snacks under the brands. Detective Inspector Homer Morgan says six people were arrested as part of the investigation, three of whom have been charged. They have been identified as 38-year-old dispatch supervisor Harold Burrell, sales representative, 31-year-old Nathaniel Sutherland, and 40-year-old Conrad Abraham. They have all been charged with larceny as a servant and conspiracy to steal. The CIB alleges that between March and November 2023, the men stole and conspired to steal a number of products from the company, amounting to a little over $18.5 million. Their actions were discovered following an audit done by the company, which highlighted several irregularities. A report was made to the police and the men arrested. They were brought before the St. Catherine Parish Court last week, where they were granted bail in the sum of $200,000 each. The three other persons remain in police custody. Burlam security guard accidentally discharged his gun, no one hurt. The East Kingston police are probing another incident in which a Burlam security guard accidentally discharged his weapon in public. The latest incident occurred on Wednesday at the Total Service Station along Deanery Road. It's reported that the Burlam guards went to the location to collect cash about 8 a.m. On leaving the location, the gun of one of the guards accidentally discharged. No one was injured. Last month, three customers of the Portmore branch of the National Commercial Bank were shot when the firearm of a Burlam guard accidentally discharged. Farmer fined $80,000 for ammunition found at his home. A St. Andrew farmer was fined $80,000 for two 9mm rounds of ammunition found in a bag at his home. Shane Hamilton, 38, of a Lawrence Tavern address, was fined $40,000 each for two counts of possession of prohibited material after he pleaded guilty in the gun court section of the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court last Friday. The court heard that on September 9, a police team carried out a search at Hamilton's house when a brown The court heard that on September 9, a police team carried out a search at Hamilton's house when a brown shopping bag The court heard that on September 9, a police team carried out a search at Hamilton's house when a brown shopping bag was found with the two rounds. Brown, when cautioned, told the police, I know my own as somebody put it there. Attorney at law Linden Will Leslie represented Hamilton while maintaining that the rounds did not belong to his client asked for the court's discretion. Camille Will Leslie also represented Hamilton. Gunmen involved in shootout at Gregory Park Primary were planning reprisal, say police. Commanding officer for the St. Catherine South Police, Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips, says preliminary reports indicate that the men were involved in a confrontation with the police on Thursday morning at Gregory Park Primary School in St. Catherine might have been planning a reprisal attack. He says the police team, attached to the St. Catherine South Operational Unit, who were acting on intelligence, arrived at the school about 8.15 a.m., where at least three armed men were seen lurking at the front of the premises. On the arrival of the police, the men ran in different directions. It supported that one of the men scaled the perimeter wall of the school in a bid to escape. SSP Phillips said the man was confronted on the compound where he was fatally shot and a Taurus 9mm pistol seized. A man who has still been unidentified, suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wound and with a black and gold Taurus 9mm pistol. Um, also a magazine containing three live rounds taken from that man. He was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was later pronounced dead on arrival by the doctor on duty. That community about a day or two ago we had a murder inside there and what our intel is suggesting is that these men were actually planning a retaliation for that murder. Staff and students at Gregory Park Primary were left traumatized following Thursday's exchange of fire between the police and gunmen. Principal Richard Williams said counseling sessions were held and the school dismissed prematurely. Uh, we're not certain if the, the person who was engaged with the police would have been a parent of ours or a relative to any of the students who are here. So hearing the number of gunshots would have, you know, for some children it was the first time they're experiencing anything like that and for it to you know happen on the school compound that was quite frightening and alarming our school has a perimeter wall right around 
800 meters of it but um, at this time based on what occurred it would be prudent for us to add to that now to do some razor wire to raise it and include razor wire and hopefully if we can get some closed circuit TVs that would be good as well to make sure that the situation doesn't recur or it minimizes the chance of well you know when it's fright people can do anything so whether razor wire or not a man will scale a fence just in case we have made contact with the ministry so they are aware of the situation with a spoken to them so they are going to be dispatching a, a team tomorrow to come in to talk with the, the students prior to the class parties because after tomorrow um, most children will not be returning to school you know after class party court here is standing caution statement by co-accused in Beecher Stone trial the panel of seven jurors in the Everton Beaches Stop McDonald trial on Thursday afternoon, heard a damning caution statement given by his co-accused Oscar Barnes after he was cautioned by the police. McDonald and Barnes are on trial for the murder of McDonald's second wife, Tonya. Picking up where he left off on Wednesday, after the defendant's legal team objected to Barnes' caution statement being entered into evidence, the detective sergeant consulted his notebook. Marshalled by the prosecution, he began reading. We couldn't see of sassy life. Me no smuddy I go dead. Even Thursday before she dead, me dead the same place wanna pick me up. And him circle me and say, he want two nine millimeter for buy. You get me? Me said to him, a man channel and them place to get them things there. Is a man from another be him comfy buy it from. Me no know him and him no know me neither. Him say another be him comfy buy it from. Me no know him. Right the same start with squeal out everything. Him say one of the gun for the man and one for the woman. Him never identify any of them like a talk who I get the gun. Go so boom and a black hair come pick him up and the car tint. Where's me today? The female whims him go buy the gun for call him and say if him a get through and him tell us him a deal with it. Because me know how they so stay. So that's why me said to him, bad man, he better you go up so. Shout the female. The female did a come a be and him tell us enough he better come. I went up got a mansion here because the time run out. I mean I better go up there. Me stop in a porty. The man I call him every minute. He come in like he afraid how the man did a talk to him. He come in like a boy to me. The man did a say, me and him can't go deal with it. Him say one man a pay him one million dollars for kill him wife. And him have two more contracts like that for deal with. Oh, me no say that the man there. Him say the man girl can't get no gunshot. And him pull out the knife out of him waist and show me. And say him have go cut her throat. Me say you can't do that then at the man them place. Him have a talent knife about a ruler length. When we reach Porty, the white car pick him up in the town. After recording the statement, the cops said he placed Barnes back in custody. On August 10, he said he interviewed McDonald in the presence of his attorneys at the Major Investigations Division. He said he served the businessman a statement given by another person and allowed him 20 minutes to speak with his attorneys. Soon after, the police asked Mr. MacDonald a total of 137 questions. He was subsequently taken back into custody. On August 10, Barnes was asked a total of 135 questions in the presence of his attorney. The cops had really informed Barnes of the charges. He remained silent. But that was not the case when he informed the widower of the charges. According to the cop, MacDonald said, Okay, charge me now. Me not do anything of that sort. I am innocent. The men were charged separately. Policeman facing list of charges after allegations of abduction and a sexual assault. A member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force is in custody, facing a long list of charges following allegations that he abducted a woman from her home in St. James and sexually assaulted her for several days at his residence in Kingston. Police Constable Shalon Campbell, who is attached to the Barrett Police Police Constable Shalon Campbell, who is attached to the Barrettown Police Station in St. James, was charged Wednesday following a ruling by the Director of Public Prosecutions. The constable has been charged with several counts of forcible abduction, rape, buggery, grievous sexual assault, and assault occasioning grievous bodily harm. Investigators from the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and the Child Abuse, Sissoka, reported that the alleged crime was committed between October 3 and October 8 at a location in St. James and at a house in the Kingston 5 area. It's reported that the constable met the 21-year-old woman in September 2022 while working in St. James and the two developed an intimate relationship over the period. But sometime in early 2023, it's alleged that he started accusing the woman of cheating and would physically abuse her. Investigators reported that on Tuesday, October 3, 
he took the 21-year-old female in his car to a location in Spot Valley, St. James, where he brandished a knife and threatened to kill her if she did not tell him who she was cheating with. The woman begged for her life. It's further alleged that the constable beat the woman all over her body, causing severe damage to her face and mouth. According to investigators, he then sexually assaulted the wounded woman at the location. It's further alleged that Constable Campbell then transported the woman to Kingston against her will, where he locked her up in his house and forcefully sexually assaulted her. Investigators said the sexual assault continued for several days, and on October 5, 2023, he allegedly called another man to join him in sexually assaulting the woman. After several days, the victim was taken back to her home in St. James by the constable, who allegedly threatened to harm her if she ended the relationship. But the matter was reported to the St. James police, who took the constable into custody. It was questioned by investigators Tuesday and charged Wednesday. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.